Now, I'm excited for this game. I'm sure you're very excited for this game. The name holds a lot of clout, and that's Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> The question I have to ask, should we get excited about this game? Because there's a lot of things that are kind of concerning to me right now. Because the devs have been relatively quiet about this game. There really hasn't really been any dev interviews. I typed like Modern Warfare 2 interviews and most of it's coming up is either stuff from 2009 or from the Game Awards announcement, which had a little bit to say, but there's not really much being talked about here. And with PlayStation Early Access coming on September 16th, that's like just a few days away, we're going in kind of blind when it comes to Modern Warfare 2 and, and that, what kind of experience to expect when it comes to playing this game. Though the general manager of Call of Duty as a franchise certainly was not afraid to make some bold statements. It really marks the step change, what we're calling a transformational moment for the entire franchise. You're going to see incredible rendering, incredible graphics, all the things just within the game itself built all on one shared engine now. So Modern Warfare 2 is supposed to be like this franchise changing game. As we do know, there is not going to be a game after Modern Warfare 2 the following year. So the next Call of Duty we're going to get is in 2024. So this game really needs the land. While most review sites praised Modern Warfare 2019, I did as well. I actually really liked the game, but it seemed like the community who actually have to play this game were not super into it. So, oh, last and certainly trash. Right in the trash. This? Oh, if what Warzone if, didn't come out in this game, if, worst yeah. one of the worst COD's ever made. Really? Warzone saved this game so unbelievably hard. Our like spawns, everything that maps. you've known, it's counterintuitive. It's a squad based spawn system so if you sneak through you spawn on your teammate it's the worst call of duty ever made i want you guys to really understand that i don't like modern warfare in any capacity oh my god i have never hated a call of duty so much and i've been playing since call of duty 4 world at war modern warfare 2 modern warfare 3 black ops 1 black ops 2 ghosts advanced warfare infinite warfare i've played them all. Modern Warfare is the worst Call of Duty I have ever played. This is fact. Modern Warfare is trash. I, I know the fanboys don't like me saying this. I've been saying this since the first two minutes of the Modern Snorfare beta. The game is absolute trash and many other people feel the same way. I have a lot of issues with this game and it mostly lies within the multiplayer. The developers themselves have literally come out and said that the game is designed for new players and to bring in a new target audience. That's why the minimap was changed. That's why the time to kill is so fast. That's why the maps are so horribly designed and why it promotes camping so much. And it's also why the game moves at a snail's pace as compared to the previous titles. So you can see the people that I source not exactly fan Fans of the game but I can generally tell you that you know youtubers they definitely do like to make videos saying that like the newest game is the worst in the franchise for views but I can tell you that these people I source genuinely believe that Modern Warfare 2019 is the worst Call of Duty that they've played in quite some time that's saying a lot as well because Infinity Ward hasn't really had the best track record I mean yes we all remember the shining gem of classic Call of Duty gaming with Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 but then they also released Modern Warfare 3 with mixed reviews for the most part, but then we also had COD Ghost, and then we also had Infinite Warfare, which, yeah, not exactly the best COD games. It's... It, it's awful. It's all fucking awful! It's all of it, all of it, and every single one of them sucks! Because need I remind you that the most disliked game trailer is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Like, that's kinda crazy. So is it worth getting hyped up for Modern Warfare 2? Well, I'm going to take a good look at what we know of right now when it comes to the campaign, the maps, and the multiplayer, and what kind of experiences to have with this game coming up. And of course, if you like these type of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let us know you want to see some more content like this, and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with everything going on with gaming. But let's get right into the details. He said it! He said it! So from the legitimate information that we know of Modern Warfare 2 so far, the most we've seen is the campaign. We haven't really seen much of the multiplayer. We've seen some when it comes to leaks and stuff like that, but mainly we know more about the campaign. And the campaign gameplay, it looked 
interesting to say like it didn't really wow me the graphics looked great but it just kind of looked like modern for 2019 with like a little bit better graphics on there which honestly is something i kind of want because modern for 2019's campaign i thought was phenomenal which i do plan to make a review video out before the release of modern for Two, so make sure you subscribe to catch that video so that's kind of honestly like what i want so i think that when the trailer was revealed it was a little underwhelming to a lot of people because it just kind of seemed more of the same but Honestly, we kind of just want more of the same, especially when it comes to the campaign. Infinity Ward recently revealed an AI video talking about how they've made huge improvements to the AI within Modern Warfare 2. If you react in a certain way or if you move in a certain way, the AI will react to you in a different way. What do people do in real life when they face this situation? We work with Navy SEALs just to make sure that everything that we do is as realistic as possible. In previous games, the AI felt like they were not appreciating their life, but in the new game, it feels like they are. AI is a huge part of this project. It is across the entire game where we put a lot of investment I think people are going to really, really enjoy it. But we hear this every new year, right? Every new year, we get a new Call of Duty, and they always like say, oh, so many new improvements, so everything's so great, the AI is so much better. We've added fluid dynamics, interactive smoke, and also added an AI system to it. So we have fish move out of the way when you get close to them. This is powered by a new next-gen engine that gives us amazing graphic fidelity and really innovative fish. Yeah, remember that one. Like these are incremental improvements we hear about every game. But if you guys remember in 2019, the AI wasn't really that concerned about preserving their lives. Conveniently plays LMG. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to slay these guys with a swarm and I mean, call it like classic COD style, man. I mean, it seems like every Call of Duty campaign, we have some kind of turret section where you're just mowing down people, just running out in the open, like kind of mindlessly shooting gallery kind of stuff. Not that interesting. Though there has been some leaked gameplay showcasing some ability to board vehicles, much like you can do in Halo, which is a really cool feature, which I hope carries over to the multiplayer because the Warzone side of things, Vehicles can be very annoying when you can't really counter them without having like an RPG or something. They also have a swimming mechanic and they put a big emphasis on swimming in this game. You can swim under the water, on the surface, and everything around between. This is going to be a very crucial game mechanic that's going to be part of the campaign and also part of the multiplayer as well. Though let's be real, every time video games have some underwater mechanics, usually there's something that people try to avoid for the most part and not bother with or they're really annoying. So we'll see how Call of Duty handles this. I don't have my high hopes on on this. Of course, what's important about the campaign are the characters, and they've really put a big highlight on the characters within Modern Warfare, and it's pretty much like the gang is back. You got Captain Price. Bravo 6, going dark. You got Gaz, you got Soap, and you even have Ghost thrown in there as well, just to kind of make it even more awesome. More on Ghost a little bit later though. They're also bringing in a brand new character, Alejandro Vargas. He seems to be a very important character, pretty much right up there with all the main characters that you know and love. It's going to be really interesting to see how he kind of plays a factor. I think he's going to be kind of like the guy who knows the terrain a little bit because the recent leaks have been saying that the campaign is kind of based off of like drug dealers in Colombia and stuff like that, which Alejandro is part of the Mexican Special Forces, so he'll probably be like the guy who knows the area kind of information, the informant kind of guy. And Infinity Ward seems to know what exactly they're looking for when it comes to this character. So the first thing you want to do when you're creating a Modern Warfare 2 character is have an idea of what that character's intentions and motivations are. We needed to speak to Mexican military, and I think that's what our audience is looking for. I believe that Alejandro has fought many battles in many lifetimes. And he just happens to be fighting one in 2022 right now. We're in our reviews, trying to look through self tapes. We see him, we stop it immediately. We were like, yo, that's Alejandro. I was blue. <laughs> oh, the wild ones. They called us Los Vaqueros. And you were clean cut. Señores y señoras, las almas need soldiers, not sicarios. Not gonna lie, I kinda had chills watching that. And like I said, we're gonna talk about Ghost and I have a bit of a gripe with the design of this character right now. I just feel like his character just looks really unbelievable. Where you're trying for so hard for realism to be authentic and kinda give you a feeling of a task force in the military. And then you have this guy who looks like a cheap cosplay of like a Marvel villain. I don't want his mother to see him as
Look on him ass, good my boy. I mean, I've never really been one to be in the military, but this guy just seems really unbelievable. Like, it just doesn't really seem like this is how somebody would dress. It almost seems like they kind of made him look that way so they can sell a microtransaction to make you look really unique and weird and badass within the multiplayer or something like that. Because the original Ghost, even though he did kind of look a little more extra, it was much more believable. I mean, look at my beautiful boy here in Modern Warfare 2. Like, yeah, he's got the cool shades. He's got like a hoodie mask kind of thing on but like it looks more realistic in life like you could see someone wanting to do this you know kind of taking regular materials and kind of making something unique about it but the modern day ghost he just like has like this like hockey face stitched on to something that's painting he under he paints his face underneath for whatever reason like i just it just looks like he's trying to be like a superhero or something like that and it just doesn't really feel like wow modern warfare or like a guy in the military or special task force would act or look like all right side rant over let's get into the multiplayer so let's talk about like the core multiplayer of modern warfare right the 6v6 what we we're kind of all expecting like the team death match experience right what do we know of so far? Well, we've only seen Grand Prix, which is a little bit of a snippet of that, and also Farm 18, which they actually have a little bit of a developer talk when it comes to that, giving you a little bit of an idea of like what to expect when it comes to some map design. But even then, it was still pretty vague and just kind of like overarching developer talk, nothing really in depth to kind of give you an idea of like what really is going to be happening with the maps, what's going to be going on with the flow, because that was a huge issue within Modern Warfare. This is the reason why a lot of people hated the game, is because there there was so much clutter when it comes to the maps within Modern Warfare 2019. There were so many doorways that there were actual doors that people would just hide behind and just kind of camp with claymores and shotguns. Like the balancing was a bit off, but the aesthetic and the feel was definitely there. There is one mode that's a total sleeper, I feel, within Modern Warfare 2, and that's going to be Ground War. I feel like Ground War has the potential to be what Battlefield 2042 tried to do. And that's to be a modern military shooter with cool gameplay mechanics. So I do feel like that Modern Warfare 2019 and Battlefield 2042 ran into the same issue with their large scale modes. And that is they didn't really tailor the gameplay, but they also increased the player count. With Battlefield 2042, the maps were just gigantic. There was so much open space. You're getting shot from all possible angles pretty much because there's just more people on the map with less cover for some reason. And then also the parts that were highly contested there's a lot of spamming because you know, people just spawn on the point so you have like over 50 p potential players in one flag that with the same gameplay mechanics that we had in previous battlefields with like half the player count things are just gonna get a bit funky or something similar happened with modern warfare 2019's ground war but the thing is that like they kept the same gameplay mechanics with the loadout based systems and stuff like that but they Kept in the normal kill streaks, which is like how it was Ground War back in Modern Warfare 2, which was fantastic, but with 60 plus players on the map, and then you're throwing on vehicles on top of that as well, with everyone getting their kill streaks and stuff like that, it just becomes a total cluster, and just things can get really out of hand. And it seems like every single Ground War lobby, someone drops a white phosphorus, and it's just really annoying for like a minute of just playing the game. And also, the map design for a lot of the Ground War maps were just areas from Warzone just kind of cut up into a space then just made it a multiplayer map which doesn't really lend itself to the proper kind of gameplay you would expect for such a more are large scale arena based kind of gameplay like we had with Ground War. I felt like everything was really scattered, there wasn't really much flow to the maps, everything kind of clustered together, there was a lot of chaos with some people running around shooting, spawning, vehicles flying in, white phosphorus flying in over you, there's almost always a UAV keeping everybody on the map. And with Within these environments are much more tailored to a battle royale experience than an actual large scale arena mode. Yeah, this doesn't really play out super well. So I'm hoping that there's going to be some dedicated maps for Ground War, or at least make dedicated Ground War maps and then put them into Warzone 2. There's multiple ways you can go about doing that. I was a big fan of Ground War back in the classic Modern Warfare 2, but it just kind of felt like it was more of the same, just a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more people on the map and stuff like that, but something that you can handle with the Modern Warfare 2019 version of Ground War, it felt either like it was completely dead or complete chaos. 
So I never really jumped back in and really stuck with the game mode a whole lot. I kind of stuck with just my 6v6 and a little bit of Warzone. Though they had better map design as well as rebalancing the vehicles a little bit. On top of that, I think you actually could come up with something a little bit special that would actually might even play better than Battlefield 2042. According to Charlie Intel here, a good source for Call of Duty news, the only thing we know about the kill streaks when it comes to this game is just a UAV smoke airdrop, which is supposed to be kind of like the new version of like a care package, the fuel bomb which is like a new version of the Predator missile, cluster spike, and also like a napalm-like strike that we had like back in Black Ops. But the kill streaks in Modern Warfare 2019 weren't really that great or fun to use. Like out of this entire list right here, all I ever used was like a regular UAV, a counter UAV, maybe like a cluster bomb predator missile or something like that. And I ever, the highest I ever really bothered to get was most likely going to be like the VTOL. The gunship basically was like a new version of the chopper gunner, even though the chopper gunner was in the game, I know, but the gunship really was the chopper gunner that we know from Modern Warfare 2 Classic. The Juggernaut, which is a new addition, and made you just feel like the Juggernaut. Hey, fuck that shit, I'm the goddamn Juggernaut. I've been waiting for this shit all my motherfucking life. Stop right there. We are the developers of skill-based matchmaking and we demand you to stop trying to get those fun kill streaks. The thing is though, that a lot of the kill streaks, especially the higher end stuff, was really tough to get because of the very strict skill-based matchmaking. But White Phosphorus was incredibly annoying to deal with. It seems like every time I played Ground War, White Phosphorus would fly in, you're damaged, you're playing slow, and everything just sucks basically. It's just not a fun experience to play with or against. Like I didn't really have much fun using this streak but the thing is like i never really bothered to equip high kill streaks because the biggest issue i felt with the multiplayer of mono for 2018 was skill-based matchmaking not just the fact that there is but the strict skill-based matchmaking mono for 2018 was the first game that we really noticed skill-based matchmaking it took the cod community some real sleuthing when it comes to figuring out that how strict it actually is in the game and honestly really ruined the fun for a lot of people and really just kind of like took away a lot of the higher end aspects of call of duty like i said the high-end kill streak for again like you have to get a 15 kill streak to get a juggernaut, I'm, I'm a juggernaut. not many people are going to be able to get that because basically the game's going to constantly keep throwing you into matches with equally skilled players which if that's the case your kd really should probably be about like one maybe 1.5 overall you're not exactly getting a juggernaut or even a tactical nuke when you're playing against like skilled players now i don't mind skill-based matchmaking put it in the game because obviously there are people in there that it does deserve to be in there brand new players shouldn't play against players like me i've been playing this call of duty series since modern warfare you know so i have my time i know how to play i shouldn't be playing against brand new people who just started playing games for the first time that's not fair. I also shouldn't be playing against people who have like disabilities and stuff like that who play Modern Warfare or other COD games. They definitely should be in their own tier, kind of like a protected bracket in a way. But it seems like they took the skill-based matchmaking and they just made it so then like everybody's in their own separate bracket and like not very casual friendly. which then forces the game to kind of play out the same every single time. Everyone ends up using meta weapons so they can at least get these kill streaks because that's what makes the multiplayer really fun. But the thing is that you can't really get these kill streaks because the game is forcing you against players who are equally skilled and it's very rare for an occasion for you to get such high streaks. That's why I never really bother with anything above a VTOL because like if I get a VTOL, that's a really good game for me. Where before I used to be able to drop scores like getting AC-130s, chopper gunners, harriers like all the time. We used to get nukes like every once in a while as, as well back in the classic Modern for two days because it was just social matchmaking. There wasn't anything ranked behind it. But there definitely will be skill-based matchmaking within Modern Warfare 2. It just depends how strict is it going to be to where it feels like every game is a sweaty match of people sliding around on the ground the whole time. Now you can't talk about Call of Duty multiplayer without talking about Warzone. And Warzone 2.0 is happening with this and it's gonna sounds like it's gonna be a completely clean slate when it comes to the Warzone experience. So if you buy into microtransactions, sorry, it sounds like that's gonna be left behind. From what we heard that there's gonna be some classic maps thrown into the Warzone experience as well, like we've seen previously with the Warzone 1, 
So I'm expecting to see a kind of a similar experience when it comes to that game mode as well. Uh, they did say that there's going to be water involved with this. You're going to have to swim at some point while playing Warzone 2.0. Depends how much though, obviously, because like I said, water within video games and shooters can be kind of hit or miss. Now I'll be straight up with you guys. I'm not a huge Battle Royale player. Like I'll play occasionally. And then if there is one Battle Royale I'm going to hop in and play, most likely it's going to be Warzone because at least it has some level of skill, but also is rather noob friendly. Me being the noob to battle royales would make sense for me to play this and honestly with warzone 2.0 i'm just kind of hoping to have like a more refined experience when it comes to just like the regular warzone experience but then this time in 2.0 with better graphics and a uh, better workflow but here's like a big issue that happened throughout the entirety of warzone is that whenever the new weapons came into call of duty right for uh cold war and for vanguard it would really mess up the balance. There was a lot of weird bugs and weird things that would happen because they had to like force integrate these weapons from a completely different game using completely different engines and then trying to make sure that they're balanced properly, which it always seemed like the newest game had the best guns, leaving all other like 80, 90 plus guns that were in the game kind of null and void. Now that Modern Warfare 2 is going to be the Call of Duty for the next two years, this should probably alleviate a lot of those issues, but we'll see what happens when it comes to the future of this mode and how they integrate new content. Though it sounds like all the Call developers are going to be working on this IW engine moving forward, making integration into Warzone much more possible and a bit easier for them to work in. So hopefully there'll be less weird bugs whenever there's an update. Spec Ops I feel completely in the dark with. I know they said they're going to bring back like a classic version of Spec Ops. So I'm assuming something similar to we had the, the 2009 Spec Ops from Modern Warfare 2 there. Because the Spec Ops that was in Modern Warfare 2019, uh, it was not good. At least from what I've heard online, because literally I was not able to play it because I was an Xbox player. It was a PlayStation exclusive for a whole year. That was supposed to be the big third mode that every Call of Duty has. And then they just blocked it off for like about half a third of the player base just wasn't able to play it. So I never really had hands on time. But when I saw the reviews and saw gameplay of it, I was like, ah, yeah, I don't miss that one bit. Here, why don't you take out some of that aggression on the drum? Uh, 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 the fox. Uh, the fox. Here we have Infinity Ward flexing the advanced AI system once again for an evolved Spec Ops experience, saying that the tactical co-op mode advances your team building skills and also sets the scene for the near endless hours of gameplay available in the world class multiplayer. But yeah, that's really all we know about Spec Ops. And then finally, we have the rumored DMZ mode. It's supposed to be kind of like an escape from Tarkov mode. It's kind of like sounds like it's going to be like a standalone ish kind of thing, like a fourth mode coming in with modern warfare 2 this is going to be a huge game that's why so much is writing on this game right now but the thing is that like it hasn't been announced we've seen leaks and rumors about it but nothing official about it but it sounds like dmz will most likely be releasing after the game itself of modern warfare 2 actually releases so it sounds like it's gonna be kind of like an early spring release maybe like a march we'll have the new dmz mode uh we'll see how it plays out if they're going to make a more casual version of Escape from Tarkov in some way. Escape from Tarkov does really utilize a lot of AI gameplay and well this advanced AI system that Infinity Ward keeps flexing might actually play a part within this mode but we'll kind of have to wait and see. Besides some of these intel drops, like most of the game, it's still relatively unknown what we're really going to get when it comes to these betas that are happening very soon. Though there does seem to be an important date for you guys to understand what the heck this game's actually going to be about, and that's September 15th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard. There's gonna be Call of Duty next. It's gonna basically reveal the new multiplayer, the new modes, and new maps as well. Which is one day before the early access for PlayStation users on the 16th when it comes to the beta, so we'll definitely know a bit more about it literally the day before we play this game. So right now, I want to get excited about this game. I really do. Dude, Modern Warfare 2 seems to be like the only game I really care about when it comes to this fall, when it comes to new releases. We do have God of War Ragnarok happening in November, and then we also have the new update for Halo Infinite, which I certainly will be covering and playing on this channel as well. But basically, it's what I want to say is just hold your expectations. Don't expect too much. Modern Warfare 2 is one of the greatest 
shooters of all time. It's a huge name to live up to. And with Infinity War's recent track record, it has me a little concerned to see what they actually come up with. I think the tone and the feel should be pretty much on point what we want out of this game. I'm assuming the campaign is going to be amazing, much like the campaign from Marvel for 2018 was, but I'm still concerned about the multiplayer. That's going to be a crucial part to make sure that this game can last the next two years and really keep this franchise afloat. But We'll just have to wait and see on September 15th. It also seems like Modern Warfare 2 has gone through some development issues, which I covered in a previous video. If you guys want to know more about it, check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.